Hello, friends. Welcome back to another episode of the William Bonney Weekly Podcast. Uh, as you know, this podcast is each and every week without fail. <laughs> um, I thought I would come back. It's been a little while since I did my last video. I think it was the Dave Courtney video. Um, I've just been protecting my head a little bit, really. Um, it's uh, It's been a rough winter. So how's everyone else been? I, um, I've had a, a pile on of things, really, that have affected my mental health. Uh, work, home life, uh, everything else. And my always my coping mechanism is to lean back into uh, comfort, really. So I was smoking too much cannabis, drinking too much, eating too much, and not getting anything done that I should be doing. Um, I didn't want to sit here just whining each week about how how tough it was because I know a lot of people out there have got it tough and I know a lot of people out there have got it worse. Um, so I just thought until I can make something good without whining, I um, I thought I would just take a step back. Uh, but we're feeling good now. I'm, I'm all good. I, um, I've sorted out a lot of my issues and some of those I'm going to talk about today because this is my, uh, my therapeutic outlet um, as well as talking about UK prison life and um, what's going on in the world. Um, this is you know, this was, this whole podcast was set up essentially just to kind of unravel what happened in prison and, and how it affected me mentally and, and physically. Um, so, uh, yeah, this is, I thought, the best time to, to get back on it. So um, I have been dealing with some of the old, you know, like prison DNA that's still in me. Not, not, not prisoner DNA, <laughs> the, uh, the prison DNA that's still in me. So what I mean by that is, you know, I, I changed fundamentally as a person when I was 18 and I, I went to prison. Um, a lot of the coping mechanism, mechanisms I put in place to uh, deal with a lot of the issues that arise in prison um, have no place in the outside world. Um, I'll give you a, a little, for example, um, I work for a company that buys cars. Uh, I'm, in a little, uh, I'm in a little office in a car park. And uh, one day, uh, this chap came in last week. He was, uh, he was a bit emotional. He, um, he kept getting a little bit sort of chopsy and narky with me. Um, and then he'd sort of say, sorry, sorry, I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going through a breakup. I, I shouldn't be uh, sort of taking it out on you. Um, and then he would kind of like be all good and that. And then I'd say something and he'd, he'd get a little bit annoyed again and he'd have a go at me. And then he'd, he'd sort of be like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm going through a breakup. Um, and then when it got to me by actually buying his car, he didn't like the price and uh, he started kicking off and he told me that he'd been warned about me. He told me that he'd been warned that I was a fucking prick. Um, and I am, but, you know, it's, uh, he, he, you know, it's a bit rude for him to tell me that. <laughs> um, so I, I kicked him out and uh, as he was leaving, um, I told him I could I can understand why his girlfriend broke up with him, <laughs> which was probably not the best and most professional thing to say. Um, but there's that prisoner DNA in me. That is that is that one uh, that uh, you know. I just always have to have the last word. Um, I always have to uh, kind of you know. I always have to kind of break people with words um, because. And this leads on to the other thing I was going to talk about, which was um, a series called Banged Up on Channel Four, and it was a fantastic uh, documentary. Sort of, it's it's set up. It's not. A, it's not 100% sort of just, you know, behind the bars in prison life. It was a bunch of celebrities being put into a prison situation with ex-offenders um, on a, on a set-up wing. So it, well, they're not actually doing time, but they have done time in the past. And uh, there was a lot, of, uh, a lot of real instances there. And, and one of them that I really want to highlight was the guy uh, from Gogglebox, the, the, the black guy who who went in there and he had a bit of a view that he was going to go in there like a bit of a youth club leader and he was going to, you know, take these these people who had you know, lived a life that have kind of gone astray and he was going to, you know, he was going to help them. Um, he was going to help guide them and, and, and kind of steer them back onto the right track. And, you know, anybody who's been to prison knows that these kind of, these kind of do-gooders and these, these people don't last. And uh, he had, a, he had a, an, ex, an interesting experience um, and there was one moment when the uh, the guy was sat in his prison cell at night and the door's locked and you can hear out the window someone shouting, hey, goggle box, you're boxed in now, aren't you? And that's the kind of thing that happens in real life. And occasionally, you know, they'll, they'll be calling you to your window. So it could be sort of half eight, nine o'clock at night. 
and you'll suddenly get a bang on the wall or, you know, the floor, someone above you will be banging and, and saying, um, oi, oi, upstairs or downstairs or oi, next door, come to your window. And, uh, and then, if you, you know, you come to the window and you've got to hold your own because if they start ripping into you, then you've got to be able to sort of verbally batter them. Um, you've got to be able to, because not only are you sparring with him, but everybody else on that side of the wing can hear you. And if you get mugged off or embarrassed or anything like that, then you can have a really rough time um, because, you know, not only is the guy who's sort of having a go at you going to be walking all over you, but a couple of those other little bullies on the wing who thought that, um, you know, they might not be able to do anything can now hear that you're you're weak. Um, so they're going to come after you. So that takes back to what I was saying about this chap at work who, uh, who you know, having a little bit of a go at me. So I said to him, you know, I can see why your missus left you, knowing that that would devastate him. And he did. He started kicking off and I just shut the door and kind of walked away. Um, nothing happened. And eventually, a couple of days later, he phoned in and apologized because um, <laughs> he still needed to sell his car. Um, but yeah, that, that, it just shows that it's still there. It's still in me. Um, I still have this feeling that I, uh, I need to compete with people and I need to shut them down and, and kind of break them. Um, and, and do it in the worst possible way <laughs> so that the next person doesn't bother and you know and anyone listening anyone listening doesn't bother um you know trying to trying to take me on and it's awful it, you know it's it, i'm not proud of it um it's my coping mechanism from something i don't need to cope for with anymore um so it's it's you know it's embarrassing now and it's it's something i need to kind of squeeze out of me um but it's there it's you know it's it is what it is um but yeah it's something that, that can't keep happening. And one of the reasons why I was kind of, you know, pushed over the edge this winter, especially with my work. Um, so like I say, I work in this little office, a little, you know, it's like a little pod in a, in a car park. And uh, towards the beginning of November, the, the heat and the electric both died. And I, uh, I found myself essentially just sat in a box, <laughs> just, um, you know, and I'm, you know, I'm having to do appointments with the fucking with customers holding their phones to like light it, things up because obviously over winter it gets dark from sort of four, half four onwards. So yeah, I'm in a cold fucking dark box um, sitting there. I spent most of the time just sitting in cars, just trying to keep warm. Now, obviously I've been chopping and changing jobs quite a lot since the pandemic. I've probably had about six jobs since the pandemic and it's, you know, it doesn't look good on your CV and I keep trying to strive for more. I keep trying to strive to, you know, I work in sales um, sales kind of batters your head a little bit but also you know you need to you can earn good money for doing very little work um, you just need to be good at sales which which I am um, so it kind of keeps me you know and, and, I, and I'm more I'm more patient than most when it comes to putting up with shitty situations and I think that's again from prison you know I think I can sit here and take take rubbish and take shit that a lot of people wouldn't take and they'd kind of walk off after day one I can sit there and do it for months um but that little gremlin on my shoulder, that little that little voice inside me, uh, the little prisoner, kept sort of saying, like, you're being mugged off. You know, you're being taken a piss out of. Um, and I'm trying to ignore it and I'm trying to do the right things. Um, you know, I'm even using AI to write better emails for me because the, the emails I write, you know, I want to, you know, I want to put my foot up their ass. But I know in the professional world that doesn't work. <laughs> And I kept getting kind of like mugged off and gaslit by the um, by the property managers, and you know the old Bonnie, you know I want to I want to devastate them. I want to you know kick off. I want to shout and I want to get my point across in a way that makes people think they should they shouldn't be messing with me. Um, but it doesn't work in the real world. And uh, eventually, I, you know, I just stayed quiet. My the, the pod got changed in the end. You know, I ended up reporting the company to the health and safety executive and that's the only way I got anything done um so uh, you know wasn't proud for snitching but it's uh, <laughs> you know you can't it's not snitching if they're fucking you over um so I can hold my head up a little bit there but um yeah the pod got changed so I'm now you know in a, in a semi-decent warm environment and uh, I can actually get on with my job without being uh without being felt felt like I'm you know I'm being mugged off uh, the division manager came down and he was the, you know, he's got the, he's got the ear of the big boss in the company. And I, I kind of thought that if I, if I say my piece to him, then at least I, I, I've got that off my chest. And in reality, I 
it, when I, once I knew he was coming down, I spent you know sort of two weeks having really sleepless nights because I uh, I was really struggling with how to how to say it in a way that gets my frustrations across but doesn't lose me my job um, because I've I've always dealt with things in the in a really bad way before and I've let my frustrations and my anger get the better of me and I've even though I'm saying the right things I, I lose because I'm saying it in the wrong way so I uh, I went from everything from you know the little the little knobhead in me wanted to call him the wrong name um, I wanted to you know humiliate him a little bit I wanted to you know take him outside and, and, and basically just say look let's go for a little walk and talk shall we and then and then there was varying situations on how I got my point across from being a complete knobhead to the other end of the scale was for me to just say nothing at all. Um, you know, the pod's changed. They don't care about me. At least, I, at least I'm working in the warm now. Um, but I don't know if I could have lived with myself if I didn't say anything at all. So the opportunity arose. My division manager came down. And there was an opportunity when he naturally just went outside. So I followed him outside and I... I, I had a respectful conversation with him that got my point across and he kind of, you know, apologised and got his, his side across as well. And it was all very amicable. Um, you know, as a salesman, you just want to be kind of jerked off and told that you're, uh, that you're really good. And, and, you know, that's what they did. So they massaged my ego. Um, I've still got a job and hopefully I can still progress in this, uh, in this industry. <laughs> but it's, um, like I say, it's been a challenge, an absolute challenge. It was... It was very similar to the situation with the uh, the lunatic, mm-hmm. that, that trans woman, man thing, troll, fucking who lives at the back of my house, who uh, who uh, who kicked off about me uh, with the with the plants and plants and things. So, um, to anyone who hasn't been aware of that situation, um, there was a lady at the bottom of my who lives at a house in the bottom of my uh, behind the back of my house and. Um, we fell out over a bit of land. I was trying to make it look nice. You know, she wants to park her car on top of it. So she ripped up all the plants and she fucking threw them over my hedge and stuff and then tried reporting me for fly tipping and all the rest of it. Like it was, it was, it was childish and I was getting sucked into it. And, you know, I wanted to just go and bury an ax in the pair of them's head because I'm, you know, I'm not the guy to be, I'm not mentally stable enough to be fucking with. Like, (laughs) Um, and in the end, you know, I wanted to ruin their lives by kind of ruining their marriage and everything. But it was, um, I came to the conclusion that, you know, I, I win by winning. I win by leaving them alone, cutting them, you know, completely out of my life, not not reacting to them um, and letting them just carry on living their awful lives. And, uh, and and funnily enough, actually, that bit of that patch of land that I was trying to make look nice, they've actually covered in building waste um, and somebody's reported them for fly tipping themselves now. <laughs> so it's... Uh... <laughs> you know justice has been served finally um, months later um but it's uh yeah at least i'm at least i'm out of the situation and, and don't have to deal with her anymore um but yeah that was again the same the same sort of thing the same learning curve you know the same prison dna that's in me that always i'm, I'm continually battling between trying to act like a normal person in society and also uh that little gremlin on my shoulder saying that i'm being mugged off and i need to uh i need to kick off um, so yeah, it's been difficult. Um, I've had some really low points mentally over the, over the, over the past, uh, past few months. Um, I have a real fear of failure. I, um, for people who listen to my Instagram videos, I, I wanted to set up a, a uh, what was it going to be? It was going to be a burrito bar with one of my, with one of my friends. Um, and the more, the closer we got to setting up the burrito bar, I noticed that the person I was going to set this up with was kind of a dishonest person. And I started to see traits in them that were quite what we, what people would call these days, red flags. Um, he wasn't the kind of person that I'd trust going into business with and that I could trust his word. He lied to me on about silly little things and he, and he fucks up quite a lot. So I took a step back and I, I kind of distanced myself from him and the burrito idea. And I, I kind of floated the idea of making up a sandwich shop um, and I went full, full, you know, full force into trying to set up a sandwich shop, um, scouting locations, looking at funding. You know, I, I created a whole marketing campaign. Um, I used AI to create menus and things like this, and some logos and things. And I got to the point where I was ready to, you know, apply for the funding and sort of, you know, borrow ten grand or so to set a business up. And then I chickened out. 
I got scared and I chickened out. Because at the moment, you know, life is relatively good. I'm earning okay money for doing little work. And I got scared of failing and costing me and myself money and my sorry, me and my partner money in our in our marriage. You know, it's it's not fair that I should set up a business that fails and then go bankrupt. Um so I chickened out. And it kind of it really did kick me in the nuts because I have lived most of my life either in prison or doing shitty jobs for people where I'm not respected and I earn a wage, but I'm not getting anywhere. You know, I don't own my own home. I have zero savings. If uh, if anything happens, then I'm in, you know, I'm in big trouble. A lot of people are in this situation. I'm not sitting here saying, poor me, you know, I'm the only one that it's happening to. Um... But I just, uh, the reality is I'm scared of failure. And uh, I think it goes back to the fact that, you know, my dad died when I was nine and my mum kind of gave up on us at an early age. So a lot of the decisions I've had to make in life have been my own. And I've got a lot of those decisions wrong since being a kid. Um, And now finally I'm I'm on a good straight and narrow path. But, you know, I've got no earning potential other than sort of, you know, having a good month, but it's not going to pay for a good life. I have had some thoughts of uh, going back into, you know, selling quantities of drugs that, you know, could pay quite quickly for, uh, you know, for, for a house and everything. But I know that would be a massive step backwards. And you can't just take the cream without getting the sour milk. Um, so I know, I know it's not the right path. But when your skill set is what you have and you're trying to push on in another area that's new, um, it's very difficult to sometimes move away from from what you know. So, uh, yeah, I've been kind of battling mentally with um, my fear of failure, my being a failure, and the fear of achieving nothing at all. I also dislocated my knee in January. Um, I (laughs) I was about to step on a plug and I twisted to uh, avoid stepping on a plug and fucking my knee made the most awful crunching noise and separated. Um, I laid on the floor like I've been shot um, and it's taken me a while to come back. Um, so at the moment, again, uh, for people listening to Instagram, I, I had what we called Operation Winnie the Pooh because <laughs> I looked like Winnie the Pooh, uh, you know, before Christmas. And now, you know, I've lost my muscle and I've just got a chubby little belly and uh, I sit around eating crisps, crisps to make myself feel better. Um, so yeah, drink, drugs, food, it's all got the better of me over the last few months. And, uh, and now I'm picking myself up and, uh, and trying to continue, but you know, we didn't, we didn't do anything destructive. I'm not in jail. Uh, there's plenty of people like me who didn't even wake up. Um, so, you know, we have to be in it. We have to be positive in, in the way that we are, take care of ourselves for now and then, uh, and then try and move forward when the, uh, the going's a bit better. It doesn't help that it's rained every day since fucking October as well. That's, that's fucking sucky. I'm looking outside now. It's a, bit of, a little bit of blue sky, but it's, um, it's not ideal. Um, so yeah, we, I've, I've been doing my best to try and come up with some titles for podcasts and things. I've used AI to uh, try and give me 12 more podcasts that I could possibly do. Um, I'm trying to... Um, uh, I want to get into doing a few more little interviews, but it's, it's just getting the time and the inclination and getting my mental space right. To, uh, to actually talk to people and make something that's worth listening to. Um, I'm also slowly writing my life story. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's in the process, and I'm also you know, still trying to do that um, crime fiction for you because there's plenty I can't talk about because I didn't get arrested for it, um, and I don't want to sort of dry snitch on myself. Um, so what we can do is we can write some fiction that's loosely based on the truth. Um, so that's what I am doing slowly as well, um, but it's... It's a case of pulling my head out of my ass at the right times to get it all done. Um, So I apologize, Um, but uh, we will get there and and this will be our year, as as we all say. Um, So yeah, thank you for coming back. Thank you for listening again. I'm sorry it's been so long. Um, I will endeavor to do more and on time. All right, so um, the next podcast should be in the next few days. Should be quite interesting, looking at technology in prison. Um, Just got to put it together and uh, hopefully speak to the right people. All right. 
thank you. Uh, and thanks for the support from the people who have messaged me. You know who you are. Um, I appreciate you. And uh, you're part of the reason why I'm still here. All right. <laughs> not, to be too, not to be too dramatic. Um, see you again soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.